Good evening, brothers and sisters. I hope everyone's having a great, happy 2021. Today I'm gonna to be speaking on lust and I'm gonna be I'm focusing on Job. Um, he's such a great example. As I was studying and reading the word, um, I was reading the story of Job and how Job was trying to prove his, uh, not to prove, but you know, he was pleading his case to the Lord and he was telling God that he had a pure heart and that his heart was righteous before the Lord. So um, I, wanted, I want us to focus on that <clears throat> because I think it's so important for us as believers to have a heart like Job and to examine ourselves. And uh, the verse I'm going to be reading is Job 31. So when Job is speaking to the Lord um, and his friends, um, Job is explaining his case and his cause and he's saying that his heart is clean because his friends were trying to say that because bad had came upon him. His friends were saying that, Job, you must have done something wrong because you know God is punishing you. But then Job was saying, that he had that his heart was pure before the Lord and on uh, chapter 31 it says I ha if I have made a covenant with my eyes why then should I look upon a young woman but what is the allotment of God from above and the inheritance of the Almighty from on high is it not destruction for the wicked and disaster for the workers of iniquity does he not see my ways and count all my steps if I have walked with falsehood or my foot has hastened to deceit let me weigh down on honest scales that God might know may know my integrity if my step has turned from the way or my heart walked after my eyes or if any spot adheres to my hand then let me sow and another man eat yes let my harvest be rooted out so this is so amazing. I get so excited with the word of God. He So Job is saying that he has made a covenant with his own eyes that he would not look upon another young woman. And I think it's so important for us to believers to also make the same covenant with our own eyes that we will not lust after men. We will not lust after things, jobs, anything that might entice our entice our heart because lust comes in different shapes and forms and everybody has a different a different lot lust problem and we have to address it and and like job he said let god weigh me on honest scales to know that the integrity of our hearts and then after Job has said if that he has anything, if he has if any falsehood in his heart or any DC, it says, let me weigh down on honest scales that God may know my integrity. So this is a righteous man. And, you know, we have to learn from reading the word of God and look at great examples. And, you know, looking at Job's life, such a great example to us as believers because here's a righteous man and with a righteous heart cleansed from any filth or wickedness and then after that it says if my heart has been enticed by a woman or if I have looked at my neighbor's door then let my wife grind on another and let others bow down over her for that would be wickedness yes it would be iniquity deserving of judgment so here he's saying that if he has ever even looked at his neighbor's wife like he's never even looked at his neighbor's wife desiring her or been tempted or been enticed. It says, then if I have, it says, then let my wife grind for another and let others bow down over her. And he says, before that would be wickedness. Yes, it would be iniquity deserving of judgment. So here he says that if he is ever enticed by even looking at another woman, it says that it's wicked and that it deserves judgment from God. It says, uh, verse 12, it says, For that would be a fire that consumes destruction and would root out all my increases. So that says, for that would be a fire. Because that's exactly what lust is. Lust is a fire that destroys everything. It destroys us. 
it destroys our relationship with the Lord it destroys the people that uh, that we're married to that we're in a relationship with and it destroys our children so that's why it's saying that it's fire because fire burns and fire destroys and he's saying it would root out all my increases and then the other uh, verse that I want to focus on because that's one part of lust lust of the eye but then there's also the lust of the flesh and then I'm um, moving on to verse 24 it says if I have made gold my hope or said to find gold you are my confidence if I have rejoiced because my wealth was great and because my hand had gained much so that my heart had been secretly enticed and my mouth has kissed my hand this would also be an iniquity deserving of judgment for I would have denied God who is above so this is just saying that even if we're desiring even gold or even looking at yourself and looking and saying like wow look at myself look at how much I have accomplished and it's saying that this is also iniquity deserving of judgment and so God judges the heart and everything that we have in our heart that is not pure God is judging the motives God is judging our thoughts and it says for I would have denied God who is above so us as believers and children we have to make sure that our heart is cleansed and pure before the Lord it's very 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 important I'm gonna give a little story um so i'm always very careful about everything that i do in my life as a believer i am careful about the music i listen to i only listen to christian music i am careful about the books i read i only read christian books i only watch christian content um, except if it's like um, for like exercise purposes then but I still make sure that the music is not vulgar or anything in the background like if I'm watching an exercise video I make sure that it doesn't have like a yoga or Buddha or anything in the background that um because of my convictions and um, <clears throat> Uh, one time I was talking to <clears throat> a friend of mine and um, she was saying that that um, that I shouldn't be like so picky and that um, that if I want to like uh, spend time like uh, with my family and friends that I should be a little bit more open because then it's going to be really hard for me to to spend time with people that are not believers and then after that I was like okay you know I respect her advice so I I, I, um, I was trying to find the best best movie that I could <clears throat> that was non-christian that was like you know Hollywood movie that you know they would want to watch <clears throat> and this was a true life story of a guy that was in prison so I, I just and it said that it was PG-13 so I always make sure I watch PG-13 because I don't want anything bad to pop out, but PG-13 is not good. It is still really bad. They use God's name in vain. They cuss a lot. So I wouldn't even recommend that. But anyways, I watched the movie and, and they use God's name in vain twice and they said a lot of bad words. And then afterwards, God said to me, the reason why you hear from me and the reason why you see me and the reason why we have such a good communication is because you have purified yourself before me because you have purified your eyes you have purified your heart you have purified your soul therefore everything that is in you it's pure so the connection is clear the canal is clear Therefore, like my spirit is as clean as I have control over because I have, I have, I have done my, my, as much as I can as my part to be a clear channel for the Lord 
to to for me to hear from God and you know to obey him as much as I can and you know I'm always asking him like you know let me know if I shouldn't watch this even if they're Christian content or this and this and that like I'm still very very careful you know in the scripture that I think I think about is blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God and it's so important that our hearts are pure if we desire to grow if we desire to hear from God if we desire to grow from glory to glory because we cannot grow from glory to glory if our heart is dirty if our heart is is polluted with the things from the world then it makes it impossible to hear from God because God is holy and that's where he lives and that's where he remains and that's where he stays and his holy place and in order for us to come into that presence and to come and hear from God we have to go into those holies of holies I know that we're that's Old Testament but it still stands God is holy as and the Bible says I am holy uh, uh, for us to be holy as well and then you know has reading the story of um of job i just thought about the heart the condition the condition of the heart and the condition of the heart for a man and for a woman but in this case it's talking about job as a man that he had made a covenant with his eyes that he would not desire a young woman and it says a young woman and he also says that, and then he goes on to say that he has never done wrong to the brother and that everything that was in his power to do good, he did good. And then he tells the Lord, judge me on your scales, on your honest scales to see if there's anything, anything wrong, anything that I've done bad, then, you know, the Lord can convict I mean the Lord he's saying God I'm open to you if I have done anything wrong and then, and then you know he talks about gold as well because that's another lust the gold we live in a world where where you know where it's we live in a world full of lust we lust over things we lust over positions we lust over titles we lust over being acknowledged uh, we lust over wanting um, the approval of man. We lust over um, just so many things in our heart. And, you know, the Lord wants us not to, the Lord wants our heart to be pure before Him. And, you know, there is judgment. There is judgment from the Lord for the people that know what to do and they choose not to do it for the bible says that you were better off not knowing but now that you know you will be held accountable for the person that is doesn't know these things and they're innocent before the lord we're well, not innocent but innocence to their knowledge then the lord gives them mercy and the lord is giving them grace because they don't know but when we come to a level of knowledge, of knowing the difference between what is good and what is right, and we should not sit in front of the television watching things that are unpure, unholy, because then there will be judgment, judgment for being disobedient to the Lord, because the Lord tells us in our, in our spirit what we should be doing. And if we choose to disobey God because our own lust because we are enticed and we want to continue to disobey God, then there will be judgment on us for not being obedient to God, for being disobedient when he tells us don't follow that person. Even though in our mind we can think there's nothing wrong with that person, they don't do this and they don't do that. But if the Spirit of the Lord is convicting us, then we have to take heed to that conviction for the Lord knows what's good and what's beneficial and the lord knows what is not good and what is not beneficial and god wants us to take account of what is in our hearts the lord wants us to look inside of our hearts and to cleanse our hearts and to make sure that our hearts are pure before the lord for the lord is going to come back 
you know and the bible says that that he's coming back for a bride that's without a wrinkled or a spot and that's us and we have to make sure that our heart is cleansed before the, the lord before the lord and we have to make sure that we do everything in our power to be holy because we just can't keep thinking that because god's grace and mercy and his love is so great and so deep that we can continue to live in sin and that nothing is going to happen. Because that's false. That's not who the Lord is. The Lord is righteous and the Lord is good. But then the Lord in his goodness and righteousness must correct us. Because the Bible says that who he loves he chastises. And therefore if we're his children he will you know punish us because we're misbehaving and and we're not listening and we're not learning and we're not growing so i wanted to take the time to you know to really 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 encourage you guys to look at your heart and see if there's any lust in there that it's hidden because sometimes we push it very very down and we kind of ignore it sometimes we could ignore it or you know we're just busy we're so busy sometimes that we don't even pay attention to our heart's condition because we're just so busy with work we're busy with school we're busy with all these tasks and our heart is just you know not cleansed and the lord wants us to take the time to sit down and really see if there's any there's always something that you know that that can be better so i want to encourage you guys to really look at your hearts and ask the Lord, ask the Lord to reveal it to you. Ask the Lord if there's any, anything that you know that you need to repent of. Is there anything that you were lusting over in your heart? And the Lord will reveal it to you. Uh, let's see. I'm going to read something else. It says, and I'm going to go to James. In James 4, it says, Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and you do not have. You murder and you covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures adulterers and adulteresses don't you know that friendship with god no don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity with god so right there is saying that in our in our hearts we lust for things and we covet and we desire and these things it's, it's these things are not godly for the children of god these things should not be in our heart. All these pleasures and all these lusts and all this coveting and all this murder. It says you it says you murder and you and it says you murder and covet and you cannot obtain. So we want these things and these things are earthly. They're carnal. They're not from the Lord. But the Lord wants us to draw near to him and the Lord wants us to repent for a allowing these things to come into our hearts and allowing these things because a lot of the stuff we have control over over what goes into our eye gate what goes into our ear gate we are fully in control of a lot of the things in our lives so the lord wanted me to read um the james I read James 4 and I'm going to skip a little bit and then I'm going to go to number 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. 
Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you. So this is what the Lord desires from us. The Lord desires for us to draw near to him and he will draw near to us. To cleanse our hands, you sinners, and purify our hearts. So the Lord wants us to purify our hands and purify our hearts. And I said, you're double-minded. Double-minded because as children of the Lord, we are we can sometimes be double-minded because one day we're like godly and then the next minute we are looking at things that we shouldn't things that are worldly or one minute we're praying and fasting and the next minute we're full of jealousy and strive or one minute we're over here talking to people about the lord god almighty and then the next minute we're watching something raunchy on netflix so the lord wants us to stop being double-minded if we're gonna follow jesus we're gonna follow jesus right if we're not gonna follow jesus right then just you know just put it down and continue to go the other way because the lord is not pleased when we're double-minded either we're gonna follow him with all of our hearts and all of our souls or we're not gonna follow him with all of our hearts all of our souls but we can't be in the middle because no matter what you know we're not in a we're we're in a in a conflict with god and you know we can't be blessed with disobedience and then the lord says lament and mourn and weep so you know in the in the old testament when people were mourning or lamenting or they did something wrong and they would either you know tear their robes or pull or pluck their hair out and then they would you know go on the floor and they would lament and they would throw dust on themselves nowadays and then you know that was a sign to the outward man that they were you know repenting or lamenting or mourning but for us it's giving us the same thing this is james this is new testament the lord expects the same thing not in that kind of way but you know, maybe in your room, you're praying and, and you're lamenting before the Lord. It says, lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you. We have to come to the Lord and we have to be honest with the Lord. God, I'm struggling with this. God, I have a problem with this. God, I'm, you know, I have a problem with lust in my heart. You know, I, I, I lust after men. I lust after a woman, it's, you know, it's very hard for me to see like a girl, you know, because of the way that they dress or God, it's hard for me to not desire power or position and, you know, the jobs or, or, you know, whatever it is like, you know, less for money, less for a car, less for whatever, you know, whatever it is, you know, we have to come to God and we have to tell the Lord to cleanse our heart so we can be a pure and clean vessel. You know and just repent repent repentance is so important in our walk with the lord because the lord is willing to forgive us the lord is is willing to cleanse us but we have to be willing to put in the work putting the work means acknowledging our hearts sitting down before the lord and you know lamenting and praying and you know and telling the lord like i acknowledge my sin i acknowledge my heart i acknowledge that i've been sinful before you instead of just like trying to brush it under the carpet carpet and and saying that it's not a big deal or everybody does it or it's normal and then you don't acknowledge the sin in your heart but the lord wants us to acknowledge the sin in our hearts because it's very important So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close out with prayer. I hope that the Lord was able to communicate to each and every one of us in a single different way, in a, each single special way, because God cares so much about the heart condition. And Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. And we're living in a time where we are no longer can play games with the Lord. He's shaking us up and he's shaping us up. And, you know, 
the Lord is shaping up, shaping us up. And it's just so beautiful because God has to put his house in order. And the Bible says that judgment starts at the house of the Lord. So God is coming back for us, his children, to straighten up, to shaken us up, and to fix whatever needs to be fake, um, whatever needs to be fixed. And you know, whatever can be shaken will be shaken. And the only way we're gonna be able to stand is, you know, being right standing with God, standing on the rock putting our faith and our trust in, in God and, you know, just believing his word. Because leaving his word, his God does not lie in, in the word of God. If he says that he expects us to be righteous, he means it. If he says he doesn't want us to lust and covet, he means it. He's not just saying it just to say. We have so many words in the Bible and so many stories and so many examples and everyone that didn't take heed to the voice of the Lord and everyone that was obedient perished because they were their disobedience. So I'm going to close out with in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, Father God. I just thank you, Father God, for being here with us, Father God. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your conviction. I thank you, Father God, that you care about our hearts, Father God. I thank you that you care about our relationship with you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you want to be able to speak to your children, Father God. You want your children to be able to hear you, Father God. You want your children to be able to know your presence, Father God. And I just come on behalf, Father God, of myself, of my family, of my brothers and my sisters watching, Father God, and I ask for forgiveness, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I ask for forgiveness and I repent, Father God, for the lust in our hearts, Father God, for lusting over things, Father God, other things, Father God, more than you, Father God, for putting other things in priority before you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I ask for forgiveness, Father God, for allowing the filth of the world to go into our hearts, Father God, for it to, for it, for it drowns out your voice, Father God, and it clouds our, our eyes and our hearing, Father God, and it makes us dull, Father God, from your presence, Father God. We ask for forgiveness for letting the sin of the world set to separate us from you, Father God. I ask for forgiveness for desiring other things more than desiring you, Father God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your mercy and your presence, Father God. I thank you, Jesus, that you love us and you desire, Father God, for your children to be near you, Father God. I thank you for your heart, for it's so gentle, so soft, and so nice, and just so perfect, Father God. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, your sweet, sweet presence, Father God that we love and we crave, Father God. Without you, we are nothing, Father God. Without you, we are so lost, Father God. Without you, Father God, we are confused. Without you, we are destitute, Father God. Without you, we are abandoned. Without you, we are rejected. Without you, Father God, we are dust, Father God. But we thank you, Father God, that you restore us, Father God, to our right full place father god i thank you father god that you have set us up father god on a hill father god i thank you father god that you have set us up on a rock father god that we will not be shaken and we will not be moved father god thank you for your great wisdom and authority father god that is inside of us father god i thank you father god that no matter how many times father god we feel father god you are there to help us father god in the name of jesus i thank you father god for encouraging us father god i thank you father god for shaping us and molding us into your likeness father god i thank you father god that you will correct us but not in your anger father god i thank you father god for your presence and your spirit father god i thank you for 2021 one will be a year of remembrance of all the great things you are doing father god we thank you father god for growth father god for growth father god in the name of jesus i thank you lord for being here with us father god we thank you lord and i pray for everyone that's watching that they will feel your presence and they will feel your peace father god i thank you lord in jesus name we pray 
we all say amen thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus for everything you're doing thank you for your love thank you for your wisdom thank you for your patience thank you father god for allowing us to cross over to 2021 father god we wait to see the salvation of the lord in jesus name we pray amen